So let me start and let me just say that tonight's class is, it's about everything surging. I, you know, I, I like classes like this because it's basically learning how your machine works. And I think once you learn that, it just makes it easier for you to make the right choices as to how you're going to do something. And it might be something you've never done before. It might be something I've never done before. But the more you know, the more you can experiment. So what we're going to look at is those times when you have to sew two seams together. So for an example would be um, the underseam in a t-shirt Actually, no, you do that the other way on this one. It would be, gosh, I can't think of anything at the moment, a pair of leggings, okay? The crotch seam and a pair of leggings. And with the serger, sometimes it's difficult when it's that really thick seam where you've got both um, sides of the seam allowance next to each other, and it makes it quite thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move you onto the other camera, and I'm going to show you how I alternated the seams. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at what causes the problem. And then we'll work through that. And then I will show you how I did the alternating seam, but it's very easy. I'll also show you how to do it really badly because I think that helps to know these things. So I'm gonna turn you around and put you on this camera. It's dark down here, let's put another light on. Oh, it's not connected. Okay, well, it's not that dark. So transitioning onto this one okay so here we have it and this is this is what I call an alternating seam and it's nice and smooth and it's nice and flat and how do I get that can you see how nicely it meets together it's not distorted or stretched this is on a knit but it also applies to thick fabric and actually it really applies to wovens too because there's advantages to that to using this method. So what happened was I turned the seam allowance on this side of the fabric to the right and I turned the seam allowance on the back side to the left. And what that gave me was it gave me a locked in seam. They were locked together. And so when I came to sew over them, I didn't have problem with distortion. Now I still used a hump jumper and I still took care um, and I'm going to show you that but I, I recommend whenever you can to use this method, but there's always going to be times when you can't. So let me show you what happens if you, um, if you don't alternate your seams. Now this one, I have done it so that both the seams are going the same way because sometimes you just can't avoid that. And I want you to see how messy it looks up here. Do you see how the stitches have got very short? And actually, it's not too stretched, but you can see from this side, the stitches are slightly distorted. And that's all to do with the feed and also the foot. So let me, let me bring you back to me again and we'll discuss that. So as I said, when you alternate your seams, you really solve a problem. And the times when I alternate machines is if I'm using my serger to sew my blocks together, which I do because it's fast, I get a straight line. And even though this is a cotton, I do the same thing. I alternate the seams, I hope you can see it that well. And it just helps to make them really accurate. And um, I just work from seam to seam. I don't actually pin. I just put a seam on top of it and sew to that seam and then keep on going. So I use it for piecing. As I said, I use it for knits. I use it with a very thick fabric. Um, but I think tonight what I'm going to do is I'm going to show it to you on knits because that's where it's really at its ugliest, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew one really badly. This is fun. I like doing this. Right, I'm going to move you around to my machine and we're just going to sew it. And I'm not going to pay any attention to the right things to do. I'm just going to sew so let me get two pieces of fabric and I'm not going to alternate them. I'm going to put them together because that will enhance the problem. Okay, so now because I'm sewing this and they're both going the same way, I'm going to sew them from this end so I don't have to cope with the seam flipping, you know, back as I sew it. So let's just put that together and sew. 
And the point of this is, you know, if you were in a car and you were driving up to a, a sleeping policeman, they do call them sleeping policemen, don't they, Richard? No, they're speed humps. Speed humps. Sorry, you call them speed humps. I knew I got that wrong. You're going to slow down to go over that hump, aren't you? You're not, you're not going to go super fast and, and take no speed off. I'm using a four thread overlock. I'm sewing a knit. I have my differential feed on 1.3 and here I go. And I'm actually not cutting anything and that just makes it easier. Okay, if I was cutting as well, I could make it look even messier. But I'm just going to carry on and go straight over that lump. And you can see it's really distorting as I do it. And that's because it's a knit. Okay. And I'm glad to say it's really ugly because that's what I expected. Okay. It's kind of stretched over the seam. And you can see it really isn't pretty. And you see how it's got lots of close stitches here. here. Let's just discuss those two things. So first of all, when I'm sewing and I come to the hump. Let's discuss this one first. When I come to, did I do that in my notes? Yes. So when I come along here and I'm, my foot's going along, my foot needs to come over this bump. But of course it doesn't want to because it's on one flat level. So it just keeps pushing that seam and distorting it. Okay, so how do I deal with that? Well, even if I'm sewing a woven on the sewing machine, whenever I get to that, let's just do this one. I'll just come in um, slightly down. I haven't pressed it, so it's probably not going to be that pretty, but let me just show you how it distorts. So I'm coming down to this seam and you can see my foot is just pushing the seam. It's pushing it and it's pushing the fabric to the left. If I was cutting as well, it would be pushing it even more to the left. And people often complain about that when they're sewing knits, that the fabric moves to the left. And that can be the act of it cutting. And But it, in this case, it's absolutely the act of approaching this bump. So what I need to do at this stage where it's pushing it is I need to release the tension. So I lift the foot, or you can lift the front of it. It doesn't matter. I always worry about you breaking your foot if you do that, but you can do that. But I'm just lifting the foot and releasing the pressure and see how it's, it's improving. It's, it's releasing the tension. I've still got the problem of my little short stitches and that's fine. I'm going to show them to you in a minute. And when you're working on a knit, lifting the foot to release the tension is certainly something you want to do. Do it on a woven too. But it's not going to completely solve the problem in every case, okay? It's going to help, but it's not going to solve it. So why is that? Do you see all those very tiny stitches just here? Well, the reason for that is when the front of my foot goes up, the back of my foot goes down. And what that does is it digs into the fabric and it stops it from feeding. And then you get all these tiny, tiny short stitches. Okay, so I need to worry about the fact that my foot is going up at the front and down at the back. And a lot of that's to do with the fact that it's a long foot, but don't rush to use a short one because then you lose the advantage of the feed dogs. So I've told you that one of the ways to help is to lift the foot to relieve the tension. So that's good. But what we need to do now is make sure that the stitches don't, the foot doesn't lock at the back and create those short stitches. So the next thing you're going to consider doing is using a hump jumper. Now a hump jumper can be some fancy thing like this. It's called the big jig. It's very good. And if you don't have one, then you can just fold up pieces of fabric until they're quite thick, thicker than you think. And what you're going to do is you're going to pop it under the back of the foot behind the needle. And what that's going to do is it's going to level it out. So let's have a look and see. So as I said, my favorite technique is alternating the seams, but there's always going to be the time when you can't. So let me just cut this seam down so it's not so long.
Right, here we go. So I'm going to put that right up to my needles. I'm going to have the raw edge right against my knife. And the reason for that is the best feed. It's going to give me all those feed dogs working for me. That's basic on the, on the serger. Make the most of the feed dogs. Right, so I've got that lined up and I'm going to stitch. And I'm not anticipating it giving me a problem until the foot gets to that seam. So let's go on. And now it's starting to distort and I can see it. So I'm going to lift the foot and that's going to allow that fabric to move back to the knife. And then what I want to do is I want to lift the back. So I'm going to, my needles are in and I'm going to slide this underneath the back of the foot on top of the fabric, on top of the fabric, but under the foot. And then that is going to help me. Now I still might need to lift my foot just to um, release the tension. And then my hump jumper, you know, I have to put it back under because I want it to go a bit further. So that's fine. Lifted my foot, did that. You see how much better behaved it is? Now the foot is level and I don't need it anymore because I'm over the worst of it. Right, so see how much <clears throat> better that is. You can see there's still a few close stitches there, but it's nowhere near as bad as this one, okay? So that's your answer, is to worry about leveling the foot and releasing the tension. Now there's some other things that are going to help you along the way, and that is, let me bring you around to the front so that I can give you another look, because I'll be discussing the next stuff. Do I sell the big jig? No, I don't. I don't, I don't. So those were some, those are the, that's the way to consider dealing with the really thick seam. But best of all, alternate it. And I will show you it alternated. It's really very simple and it solves all the problems. But there's always going to be the time when you can't do that. So there's other things that will really help. And I think probably the most important one is pressing. You know, press with steam and let it sit on your ironing board and dry because if you pick it up wet, it will curl and it will stretch. But this is also a clapper. Now, this is a great big clapper. You can get smaller ones. They're made of wood. And the idea is when you steam it, you put that on top of the seam and it really flattens the seam out as the um, steam gets absorbed into the wood. I have no idea how it works, but it works. OK, so that is one great way. Another great way is to get a hammer. How much fun is that? And just to hammer the seam flat. Okay. Another thing that some people find really works for them. I, it doesn't so much for me. I don't use it so much unless I'm using something really thick. Is to alter your foot pressure. But don't alter your foot pressure to the point where the feed dogs aren't working for you. So most of my knits, I'm generally in the middle range with my foot pressure. And some of you may want to know where your foot pressure knob is. So just let me show you on the baby lock. Some of them will be on the very top above the, the foot, on the very top of the machine. And let me just turn you around and show you this one. On this one, it is, you can see a tail wag in there, can't you? That is the foot pressure knob. Okay. So... Basting in <clears throat> that seam could help too. But I think the other thing that I've always said and I, I strongly stand by is not cutting as you sew a seam like that takes away the knife. You know, when leave the knife up and cutting, but just have your raw edge against it. But sometimes when the machine cuts into knits, it stretches and it starts to get a drag on it. And that can create a problem too. So I think that is all I had to say about the problem. I just have to show you how I did the alternate. Do I have any questions? Yes, where Richard? can you get the big jig from? Maybe where can you get the big jig from? Um, I would try your local quilting and sewing shop. I am 
100% sure that they will have something very similar, if not this. And if you can't get that, then you just fold up, take a piece of fabric and fold it up so that it's bigger than you need and pop that under the back. It doesn't have to be a plastic jig. I generally use fabric. It's just that I think it's easier to demo with that. Right, any other questions, Richard? What do you do for the triumph? Guarding the humps. I don't know what she means by that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the joy of alternating the seam, how, how that really solves every problem. So I'm going to move you back onto the machine and then I'm just going to have a quick chat about cover stitch M's. So here we are. Now I haven't even, no, maybe I did press it. So here I have my alternating seams. Do you see one's going one way and one's going the other? And to be honest, I'm going to put pins in them, but obviously pins and serges don't get on. So I'm going to pin it well out of the way of where I'm going to stitch because I don't want the pins to meet my knife. Now my knife is up and it will be cutting and I will be running that raw edge against it, okay? So let me just cut some of this off so it doesn't take 10 minutes to sew. And I, I'm still going to, I'm still going to worry about lifting my foot, but I'm not anticipating needing to use the, the um, hump jumper, the big jig. So off we go. As I said, my um, differential feeds on 1.3 and I'm heading up to that seam. And don't forget, it's half as thick because I've divided it up. And the, the bump just isn't that great because it's spread over two things. But I am still going to lift my foot because that's going to release any tension. Okay, I'm not worried about those pins because I put them out of the way. But if you are, you can take them out. See how I keep lifting my foot? I do this even on the sewing machine. And I do it... I do it... Um, with any fabric, woven, slits, anything. Just when I go over a seam, okay, not, not throughout. Right, do you see how perfect and easy that is? That didn't give us any trouble at all, did it? And that is, that is the easiest way to deal with it, okay? Perfectly flat, neat seam and a nice match up. And you know, when you press it, it's not going to be as thick there either. Okay, it's just going to flatten nicer. So what happens if you want to do a cover stitch hem? Okay, and I, let me show you. I've got one here. It's actually a, it's a top for Claire that she hasn't got yet. But you know, the good news now is that now I've got two granddaughters. If I don't get this done in time, at least it will fit the other one. Oops, sorry. So here's, here is the hem. Okay, and I folded it over. And as it stands at the moment, I have this thick seam, don't I? Whoops, sorry, that wasn't, I, I got you out of the camera. So I've pressed it, press it, and it's going to be like that with this thick seam. And you just know when I'm using the cover stitch and going around that that is going to push and give me all sorts of problems. So this is what I'm going to do. On the line where I have pressed it, where the fold in the hem is, I am going to cut into the seam. Okay, and that's going to allow me to turn one one way and one the other. And then when I fold it up and stitch it, I've got those alternating seams on my cover stitch hem. Okay, I'll show you on a piece of fabric as well, just in case that wasn't too clear. So I pressed up my hem, there it is. I don't want these two seam allowances to be on the same side because that's super thick. So I'm going to open it up. I'm going to cut into the seam allowance only where the fold is and what that will allow me to do is put one one way and one the other. So when I fold it up it's less thick. If you don't do that you'll get a twist in there and then you'll have another lump. Okay. And then I'd use my cover stitch and I would sew and I really wouldn't expect to have too much problem. But guess what? I'm still going to lift the foot and release the pressure. If it was a very thick fabric 
and I thought I might have a problem with the height of the seam even though it was single I would then use the hump jumper as well okay so bring you back round to me do I have any questions why did you change the differential feet do you always change it for knits yes Patricia I very rarely sew a knit that I don't use it on 1.3 an exception may be a knit that didn't stretch <laughs> 